Welcome back to Fine Art Diary. In this video, we are going to see how to paint this beautiful waterfall. This is a commission painting and is not going to be a brush by brush detail tutorial, but I am sharing the steps of a successful painting. So let's get started. This also could be a vertical painting, but this was a client's choice, so I have taken 24 by 24 inches canvas. So first of all, I am going to start with a preliminary sketch and for that I am going to use a sanguine. Let me show you a close up of that. Now we need to decide the composition of the painting. So let's decide the direction of the waterfall. So this is going to be the first fall and this is going to be the second fall and then it is going to come to this direction. So this is what I have decided. Now let's start drawing. We can start the drawing from here, not exactly at the center, but a little bit left hand side and that has to be according to the composition. Now let's position all the elements. In this area there will be a layer of bushes, now some rocks in this area and all the rocks should look different from each other. Some tree shapes in this area. And right hand side also there will be some tree shapes. Some more tree shapes. Actually there will be several layers of tree shapes and bushes in the right hand side. I know it is very difficult to see in the camera. So here is the final drawing. First of all I am going to give a basic wash to the canvas to get rid of the bright white. And before doing anything, let's moist the canvas with a spray bottle. Now I have taken raw umber, viridian and crimson. Why viridian and crimson? Because these are complementary colors and after mixing together, it can create a very beautiful cool gray color. You can see in this stage the paint is very very much diluted. It is almost like a glaze. In between, you can use a spray bottle to moist the canvas. And this is how we work with a large canvas. So the wash is done. I let it dry for some time and I'll come back. In the meantime, this is the color palette I'm going to use. Starting with titanium white, cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, Cobalt Violet, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Viridian and Raw Umber. So first of all, I'll start with the basic blocking and I'm going to position all the shapes I'm going to paint. I can see the underneath drawing so it is not going to be very difficult to do the blocking. Now let's start painting. In this stage the paint is very much diluted and the layer is very thin you can see. So for the entire layer I am using a kind of mid-tone but different colors to get the harmony. The predominant colors I am using right now a viridian, raw umber and yellow ochre. You can see I am mixing all the colors on the canvas itself. It is going to give color variation. This beautiful dark I am getting by mixing alizarin crimson and viridian. Now 
Now let's concentrate on the individual areas and this time I am going to paint all the darks throughout the painting. For the dark mixture I have used Ultramarine Blue, Viridian, Crimson Lake and Raw Umber. You can see I have created some rocky shapes in this area. You can see just by dabbing the brush a tree shape can be created. Right now in this stage I am not thinking about any detailing. So right now my job is to create the layers of the trees and bushes and I am painting the in between pockets with the darks. This area will be the foreground and will be covered by the grasses. So I am painting the greens. Here I am painting some rocks to show the path of the waterfall. And the rocks are facing towards each other so that in the middle there will be a path for the water flow. Now by this grey color I am doing the blocking of the waterfall. You may think it is looking too dark. Yes it is. Because I am imagining the underneath surface of it. And later on I am going to paint on the top of it. So right now this is just the positioning of the waterfall. So here I am giving the direction of the water flow through the rocks. Now I am doing the blocking of the mid-ground rocks. Here by painting some planes we can create the volume of an object and this is what I am doing right now. As you have seen in my other tutorials also that this blocking is very very much important. You almost can define everything in your painting, the light and shade, the volume, the form the position and the color harmony of an object. Now let's concentrate on these stones. So now this will be my job. I will go to the individual areas and will break the shapes even more. And that will be the kind of secondary blocking of it. So the darks will be more dark and the midtones will go towards the light and the objects will look more volumetric. In this particular painting, one thing is very challenging and that is there is no direct light. When there is a direct light, it is much more easier to paint because you know where the light areas are and where the shadow areas are. But when in a painting there is no direct light, then it is a little bit challenging because everything is visible through the bounce light. And that is the reason the enter painting will be a kind of mid value painting. If it is outdoor, then we can have only one bounce light and that is the sky bounce, which is cool. So the enter painting will be dominated by the cool blue.
Now I am doing the blocking of the right hand side rocks. Once again you can see I am just defining the different planes. Now gradually moving towards the tree branches. This painting is dominated by greens, but you can see I am using different different greens in different different areas. Some of the areas it is a little bit towards the blue and in some of the areas it is towards the yellow. So like that though you are using the same color, you can get variation and harmony in your painting. As I was discussing, once the blocking is completed, we have to work for the secondary blocking and that is breaking the shapes even more. So in the foreground I am doing the same over here, also giving the impression of some grasses and some leaves, some tiny flowers in this area. Now let's brightening up the waterfall a little bit. Previously you can remember I was working with the shadow shapes of the waterfall and this time I am defining the shapes of the light in this area. Going back to the rocks and let's add some highlights over here. I don't paint all the information at once for a particular object. I resist that temptation. So while doing the blocking we should complete entire blocking of the painting and then we should come back we should divide the shape for the entire painting then we should come back once again for the detailing. So likewise we should work. There is no hard and fast rule for that but it works for me that way. At the initial stage of the painting, in the time of blocking I was working very fast but now actually I am working very slow. So when we are going to the smaller areas and a particular object is having a particular character or a particular shape, naturally we will be a little bit slower in pace. So here I am correcting the contour of the midground rocks. Now this side also we need to add some detailing and you can see I am breaking the planes and trying to create the perspective of that area. Now gradually refining the shapes. So this time I started thinking about the detailing and the completion of the individual areas.
adding some more foliage in this area Now it's time for the highlight of the waterfall. In this case, I am using a flat brush you can see and I am using it vertically to get this kind of brush strokes. Here I am using pure titanium white for these highlights. One thing you may have noticed in this area, how the waterfall is coming downward, it is becoming bright gradually. Most of the cases, the water reflection is a little bit darker than the original object. And we should maintain this in a painting. I am not very much satisfied in this area, so blocking in some more rocks in this area. That's fine, now it's time to fine tune the bushes. Maybe we can add some branches here and there. We are towards the end of this painting, so a few touches here and there. Alright, we have completed this painting and here are some close-up shots. Hope you enjoyed today's session. If you are having any question, you can ask me in the comment box. I will try to answer or I will try to incorporate those topics in my next tutorials. And don't forget to subscribe the channel because many more tutorials are coming in future. Thank you very much for watching.